If you could monetize your podcast in the first year of starting it, would you? I think the answer is obvious, but traditionally that just hasn't been an option. Mainly because podcasts have largely been limited to one monetization source, a sponsorship or brand deal. And this is where the problem lies. Brand deals rely on downloads and downloads take years to increase to a level that brands actually become interested in. So by the time you finally make it to the point where you have a large audience and could monetize, it's probably been a few years. And let's be real, most of you guys can't afford to wait a few years, either because you don't have the patience as a solo creator or because you're a business owner and your time could be better spent elsewhere on stuff that's actually driving money rather than spending so much time and effort developing content that doesn't bring you a reward. And sadly, that's why most podcasts fail. 90% don't make it past episode three and 90% of the ones that do don't make it past episode 20. And frankly, it's not because they aren't good enough. I mean, yeah, some of them really suck, but that's besides the point. But it's mainly because they didn't last long enough to see a true return on investment. But what if most of these creators did happen to see some ROI in their first year? Let's just say they generated $10,000. I think it's safe to say that they would keep going and not give up quite yet. Well, that's exactly what we've been able to do with the Caps Off podcast. In just over a year since we've launched, we've been able to generate nearly $12,000 in revenue. And the crazy part, we've only tapped into one of all the monetization methods available to us as we've grown to 200,000 followers. We're soon tapping into the other methods. And when we do, I expect this number to explode. But now you're probably wondering, how is this even possible and how can you do the same? Well, make sure you stick around to the end of this video because I'm going to show you exactly how we did this. I'm going to break down the differences between the traditional method of podcast growth that has led 99% of podcasts to fail and the new and improved, more innovative approach that has led to our expedited growth and revenue generation. But most importantly, we're going to talk about how you can optimize your podcast in order to maximize every bit of revenue available to you in your first year, even more than we have up to this point. So whether you're a business that's trying to gain eyeballs through the organic marketing that podcasts allow, or you're just a creator who would love to see some early rewards for your effort, let's dive in. All right, y'all, so I'm gonna break down the traditional marketing method for podcasts and just podcast growth in general and the short form optimization method, which is the new and innovative approach that's only possible because of where social media has gone and just digital media in general. So this is a podcast monetization timeline comparing the two different styles okay to your left you have the traditional to your right you have the short form so first i'm going to break down the traditional and how typically podcasts have grown and monetized as they've grown and i, I mentioned it in the intro that typically you know you're not making money until you have a brand sponsorship that's how you're going to bring back money to the podcast that you've worked so hard to build. And that takes years because you need a lot of downloads. Brands aren't going to come and pay you to market their stuff. If you have no listeners, the reason they're paying you is to get in front of more eyes. And you, if you don't have eyes on your podcast, then they're not coming to you. That's the whole point, right? They want to go to a podcast that has, you know, tens of thousands of listeners per episode, really, so that their content and their brand, their product is getting in front of tens of thousands of views. That's the whole point. So until you build that, it's really hard to get brand sponsorships, but historically that you play the long game with podcasts and that's okay. I'm not saying not to, I think that's still the ultimate moneymaker and that's how you're going to really, you know, build a special brand at the end of the day. It's about having that longevity, building that community that comes with longevity and really feeding good content week in, week out, month in, month out. And then over a few years, if you consistently improve, you're going to get there to where brands will want to attach themselves to you. However, if you do want to monetize in a shorter time horizon, which obviously a lot of people do, it, it's not a coincidence that 90% of podcasts don't make it past episode three. And that from there, 90% don't make it past episode 20. It's really not. And I think part of the problem is that they're tying themselves to the results of downloads and stuff like that. And I think that's naive and not necessarily something that you should do with something that's so long form. But the second part of that is that they just don't see an overall return on investment. So I think the one thing that solves both of those issues is not tying yourself to the downloads, but instead focusing on 
short form content. Not only will that allow you to grow more quickly and actually increase your downloads more quickly, ironically, you know, focusing on the short form instead of the long form will help your long form, but it'll also help you to monetize a lot quicker as well. And I'm going to break that down. You have the traditional marketing method here. And so we're looking at what one year, two year, three year, four year timeline. So every bar you see is six months. Really for the first three years until you're able to get to that brand sponsorship level. The only way you can monetize is if you're pushing towards affiliate links, which definitely is a way to monetize. Not the easiest to get people to listen to your podcast and then drive people to go buy products from other businesses, but you can make some money that way. And obviously there are some people who can make a lot of money that way. They've kind of cracked the code, but most, and I would say 99% of people are not. And then the slash product is if you have your own product, right? So if you're an entrepreneur, you're a business, then you know, you're not necessarily worried about blowing up your podcast. You just want the organic marketing that comes with it. And so then you can make money pushing towards your own product in those first three years. So, you know, it's a small amount of money. You see the one little dollar sign here, but you can make some money. So then fast forward, uh, after those third year, after those three years, you go towards three years, six months, and then four years here. And in that fourth year, you're really, really growing. You've dedicated to the craft. You've improved every single week. You've gotten some good guests on, but you've actually found ways to, to kind of not, I want to say pop off on social because that's going to be the next method we're going to talk about, but at least make yourself seen on social lots of different ways. Then, okay, now you made it to the fourth year. Now you have solid listenership. You have thousands of downloads per episode. Let's say you have 10,000 10,000 downloads per episode, maybe 50,000 per episode, even better, 100,000. The more you have, the better the deal you're going to get. More of a retainer, less of, you know, percentage and stuff like that. Brands are going to want to pay to attach themselves to your brand. And so at 4 years you can finally on top of affiliate product and revenue, you can make money with brand sponsorships. And then I added ad rare ad share revenue as well because if you're not stupid, <laughs> you're uploading your podcast that's audio, you're recording that with video as well. So you're uploading that to YouTube. And then if you're really popping off like that with audio, your YouTube is going to be big at that point too. I mean, you're talking about four years of YouTube growth and consistent development. And I'm trying to say guys, like this isn't four years of just recording content and uploading it. This is four years of developing that content, improving it, getting good guests, like really doing what it takes to blow up a podcast in the most natural way. And so, yeah, once you get to those four years, typically the best podcasts that are able to make it this far and actually improve and iterate are going to get to a point where they can attach a brand where they uh, are making ad share revenue from YouTube, which is pretty cool. You know, and we, we've seen that happen in the past, but you know, four years, are you able to wait four years? Great. If you are, if you're not, then stick with me. And just down here, I have obviously how to monetize. You're going to wait years until you're big enough to earn a brand a sponsorship. And pretty much that's what I just went over. Now, if you would like to expedite that process, not only the growth of your overall podcast, but also the monetization where you can not only monetize quicker, but larger in a shorter amount of time period, then you're going to want to stick with me as we move to the right side of this of this timeline here. And so as I mentioned down here, short form content optimization, you're able to cut the timeline in half. And so here we're breaking this graph down by three months. So three months, six months going up to a year here, and then obviously two years. So splitting the overall uh, timeline that we had on the left with the traditional marketing method in half, because essentially the point there is that you can generate the same type of growth, follower growth, download growth in half the amount of time by utilizing the short form optimization method, which is this innovative approach. But also you can, you have a lot of, a lot more ways to monetize lots of different revenue streams that become available and not just the variety of revenue streams, but also the volume of revenue that you can generate. And so each six months is broken, broken down by an added way 
of of making money and added revenue stream. And so if you compare that to the old method, then you know, for the first three years, which is 36 months, then it's really just affiliates and product. And you're really not going to make money until you hit that, you know, the final like fourth year there, not the final, but the fourth year where you can add brand sponsorships. And by that point, you're probably making some ad share revenue on YouTube as well. <clears throat> Here, every six months, we kind of get a new one. So I will preface, you know, before we head into this, this is the short form optimization method. This is if you're optimizing your podcast growth for short form content. You're optimizing your podcast in general for short form content. Now that doesn't mean that you're creating absolute shit long form content and not caring about your long form, but it does mean that as you create your long form, which is your podcast, your podcast is going to be longer, whether it's th from anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour and a half, like podcasts tend to be somewhere in that range. Let's just call it an hour for this for this video here, we're going to use an hour example, but let's say it's an hour. What you're going to be doing is you're going to still record that that you know, long form podcast. But with that podcast, you're then going to focus more and prioritize more on what you can clip down from that uh, podcast because the short form video platforms like TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube Shorts, even they're what going to give you exposure that we're going to give you your your podcast exposure so if you can optimize the content that comes from your long form for those platforms now those videos are going to go viral and people are going to know that your podcast exists they're going to if they like it how else would you get in front of people that like it right if they like it they're going to go and listen to your full podcast they're going to go listen to your full episode they're going to go to the youtube or the audio whichever they prefer <clears throat> And now they're loyal subscribers, but the only reason that they got there in the first place is because they became aware of your content through the short form. And that's what we've been able to do to grow our podcast to 200,000 followers in only a year. And it's also how we've been able to generate revenue. And as I mentioned in this intro, we've only tapped into one of these revenue streams and I'm going to break that down. I'm going to be very transparent. I don't want to be transparent to why we've only chosen one so far when realistically I would like to do more, <clears throat> but I'm going to present the, how you can do this yourself if you're building a podcast and you're in your first year of growth. So the first six months here, the, every bracket is going to be six months. So the first six months here, three and six, you can really monetize with affiliates and product. So kind of like what we mentioned for the first three years for the traditional marketing method, you can do that in your first six months. It's how you can do any type of organic content that you're going to make. You can always do that. Now, how successful you're going to be is going to depend on how many people you can convert, which means how many views are you getting? So really in this first six months here, I'm not really worried about pushing to affiliates or product. I'm just saying that that's how you can monetize. I'm really focused on growth. And so any type of CTA call to actions that uh, I'm putting at the end of videos, and by the way, one every three to four videos is kind of our rate uh, uh, as far as throwing in call to actions at the end of videos to drive somewhere. Um, any of those, I like pushing towards podcast growth. So uh, I showed in my full content breakdown uh, and strategy of how we step-by-step -step how we built our podcast from zero to 200,000. I showed you guys what uh, our call to actions are and how we incorporate them and when we incorporate them. So if you haven't seen that, I recommend you want to check that. I'll put a video up top here, a little link up top, and I'll also put the video in the description. So make sure to go check that out if you haven't seen that yet. But that's, you know, in the beginning, the first six months, I would focus on any CTAs going to the long form podcast, just building that followership. But you can drive to affiliate or product if you want. And in these first six months, especially in the back half of the, those six months, you should be generating thousands of views by that point. If you're really optimizing for your short form content, and it really could be in the tens of thousands of views, if not in the couple hundred thousands. And I'm not saying every video is going to be a couple hundred thousand, but I'm saying one will pop off and consistently thousands and tens of thousands. And so if you start really seeing success there and you want to start maybe just like one every now and then throwing a CTA to a product or affiliate, by all means, go ahead. There's, there's, there's no problem with that, right? Because you're already generating views. You're starting to generate that followership, that, that community that likes what you're creating. So you can drive to an affiliate again, affiliates that I, 
recommend if you're in like the sports media business is a lot of these daily fantasy apps and daily fantasy platforms are giving out a lot of money if you can drive first time deposits so, you know people to go to their app and drive first time deposits spoke to somebody a few months ago that made three hundred thousand dollars only on affiliates from their tiktok content so that's pretty huge obviously but he was able to drive a, a big following so first though these first six months I would focus on growth, okay? And maybe incorporate a, a little bit of driving towards an affiliate or product if you want, okay? The next six months, rounding out the year, months seven through 12, the next play, monetization play that comes in is ad share revenue. So affiliates and product, now you can start ramping that a little bit more. As far as the CTA goes and the volume with CTAs, like I said, one every three to four videos really makes sense when it comes to adding CTAs. It's You can add more if your CTA is driving to the long form because it's just, you know, it's your content pushing to more content, which doesn't feel invasive at all. The more I would say out there, the more you're pushing towards like another business or it's more clear that you're going to get a share of of money if you drive someone there it's it's more invasive right like if compare hey if you like this video go watch my full podcast that's not invasive you just it's more content that you already know you like but it could be invasive if you're like go buy this product from one of my favorite brands and like how are you incorporating that in your content it's harder to so i would be more use that more sparingly so well, the way we do it is let's say like one for every four videos you're pushing to your long form podcast. So then maybe one for every eight you're driving CTA like that. Now it could be more often. I'm not saying that it's going to kill your content. I think the better your content is, the more you can get away with that. So we've driven different places with to businesses and in different like sports betting partners and different areas that like drive can make money for us. And it hasn't really killed our viewership at all because our content beforehand is so good. The CTA is usually at the end of videos, but just putting that out there. So you can start driving more towards affiliate and product and then also ad share revenue. Your ad share revenue is something that you're going to start seeing on TikTok if you're really driving uh, a lot of views, which you really months seven through 12 should be a, a really strong period for you in terms of growth. So what this is, is the new... TikTok program. And the reason that you had to wait till this last bracket here in the first traditional marketing method, which is like in that fourth year where you can finally start making Azure revenue from YouTube. The reason it's in the first year uh, with the short form optimization method is because TikTok is offering a very attractive re ad, ad share revenue program as well. And they call it like the creativity program beta, I think something along those lines. And essentially you, the requirements is you, you just need 10,000 followers. So by this time you should definitely have that. And then it only counts for views you get on videos over a minute. But by this time in this, these six months here, your video should be should start to get longer and longer and longer. And I'm going to make another video about how to, you know, truly create like the production process of optimizing for short form then make sure to, to tap into that. I'll hit the notification bell for when that drops. I'm going to make a video on that. But essentially, like in these last, uh, the last six months of the year, of your first year, like your, your videos can probably start increasing in length. And as you go on, they can start getting longer and longer and longer. And so you're going to hit that requirement of at least a minute. And you're going to start pulling in ad share revenue from TikTok. I think it's the RPM or CPM, whatever it's the cost you, you make per thousands of views. I think it, YouTube's obviously has historically been really good compared to all the others over dollar or whatever. Well, TikTok is competing with something really strong like that too. A lot of people are hovering in that dollar range. We're in that dollar range, I think 90 cents or something like that per thousand views we get. And we've been getting a lot. And so the screenshot that I put in the beginning of this video that showed the 12,000, that is from ad share revenue specifically. That is the one monetization tactic that we've really hit hard. And it's really cool because in this process of growth for our long form podcast, because at the end of the day, like, yeah, we're trying to get to that brand sponsorship level. But the fact that we've been able to monetize in that in that time period leading up to that in the growth process has been really, really awesome. And that is because we've been able to focus on the short form content, the short form optimization methods that have allowed our TikTok to blow up to get to 150,000 followers and our Instagram's at 40,000. Like our YouTube has grown a lot because of our short form content. 
But the ad share revenue from TikTok has been insane. And it's because, you know, we create such good short form content on TikTok and a lot of volume. And so you tap into that. This is the back half of your first year. Now, heading into the first six months of your second year, so months, what, 13 through, what is that, like 18? Uh, about, or I guess, yeah. <laughs> then you're talking about not only affiliates and ad share revenue, now you're going to be driving, the more followers you have, the more views you have, the more you're going to be making with affiliates, right? And so naturally you keep that going and in your process, you're going to be making more money from that. You're going to be making more from ad share revenue because you're going to have a greater following. You're going to have more views. And then also you can start monetizing from memberships. So a lot of independent podcasts who just want to monetize early, you know, before they can get to that brand sponsorship deal and they start building a community base that likes what they're creating. They're able to go to their community and say, Hey, I, I, I really support the viewership. I, I, I love the support that you guys give to our podcast and the more you guys can help, the better content we can create for you guys. So a lot of independent creators create like these like pools where, well, I would just say like membership tiers to where you can access the podcast or, or listen to the podcast or we'll go watch the podcast for free regardless. But if you want to be an exclusive member, then you can pay $3 a month. And then usually there's a few tiers. So the cheap tier could be like something like $3, $3 a month that will, and then you'll give them some bonus perks for that. Like, let's say, let's say you give them a shout out at the end of your episodes. It could just be like on your YouTube videos. Maybe you put a, a graphic at the end or just a end card that has like the names of everybody that's there. You know, and then the middle tier could be they now they can give input on the content that you create. And maybe you do a giveaway, like you give away like merch if you have merch or something like that. I've been included merch as, as a monetization option, but you know, it, it goes into product if you have that. Or you could be whatever it is, like and start increasing the the perks that your members get for every tier. So usually tiers, you know, there's three tiers. So one could be like three, ten, and then maybe like thirty a month. And then just think about like, the more people you can get into your membership. And obviously most that come in are gonna come in at that low tier. But let's say you have like fifty people that become members and really like at this point after 18 months, then you have a good follower base. Like I said, we're not even at the 18 month mark. We're around the 13 month mark now, 13 to 14. And we have over 200,000 followers. We're going to convert some of those members. So that's something that's our next step is doing that is, is creating a membership and really being able to make money off of that. But not only that, but make our community feel more the ones who want to be in more of an exclusive part. And we already know who a lot of those are because they're the ones that are DMing our individual accounts, right? Like individually or messaging me. They're DMing me on my personal Twitter, not even the caps off Twitter that, you know, the podcast Twitter, they're not only hitting us on TikTok, but they're hitting us on Twitter. They're following us on Instagram and messaging us there and replying to our story. So we already know who those kind of exclusive members are who would love to pay. And so you're actually, you're giving, you're doing them a favor by providing them an opportunity to pay, to be in more of an exclusive member. They want that, that rite of passage. They want that, that premier feeling of being that elite fan where they can kind of brag about like, I'm a day one. I'm, I'm more of a fan than you are. You know, they can brag about that to their friends as this podcast grows. And you're at the stage now where it's really the early stages. So people who are coming on feel like they found gold, right? Once you have millions of followers, then people that come on afterwards are just like, they're just part of the pack, right? It's like, if I went, were to go listen to the Logan Paul podcast now for the first time, I'm just joining millions of people. There's nothing special. But when they're when you're in the early 100,000s range, like you're still early, even in the tens of thousands, like you're really early and people are gonna want to attach themselves to that. So memberships are a way to monetize there. And now you're making money, right? By this point at an affiliates of products. Like I said, people have made lots of money through affiliates. I mentioned it in the past, somebody I, I ran into in the fantasy football expo in like August who only used TikTok, literally made $300,000 in a year from just TikTok videos pushing towards daily fantasy sports bets where he would get a percentage or not a percentage, but he would get a certain amount of money, probably like 25 to $50 for every person that signed up with the app. Overall, he made $300,000 in a year. So think about how many people he pushed. So by this time, when you have a certain amount of followers, you're making good off affiliates. You're making good off of ad share revenue. We average around 3000 per month right now with the ad share revenue from TikTok. And then you can start making off of membership as well. So if you're really tapping into this, the affiliates and product. And you might be asking like why we haven't gone 
all in towards like affiliates and stuff like that. Well, our podcast is actually owned by a startup uh, or another company and any money that like we drive, like goes to them. So we're not calculating that for ourselves. And also because of that, we're not tapping in all the way like we would if we were completely independent and we were seeing the our own if we were seeing all the cash that we could drive there like obviously then we would push more towards those but we're not so yeah just keep that in mind and then so yeah at this point i think you're really comfortably making minimum you you're making the ad share revenue which is a few thousand a month three thousand a month but i think truly and honestly you could be making upwards of 10, 15, 20,000. And if you're really pushing it, you could do even more than that. And then lastly, on these last six months of these two years here, so finally closing it out, you add brand sponsorship. So that's the final one. I don't really need to break that one down. It's kind of what we talked about before when we were talking about the traditional marketing method. You're going to have a lot of views at this point. Let's say you have, by the end of two years, Let's say you're anywhere from like 200,000 to a million followers, or let's even just play it safe, 100,000. Like we've grown really quick to 200,000 total in a year, but let's say you're able to do that in two years. That's okay, right? Eventually, like a brand will want to attach themselves as you get bigger and bigger and bigger. And you know what it is, right? Like they're going to say, oh, like you guys have a lot of followers. You guys have a lot of views, a lot of engagement on your content and we want to be able to have organic marketing as well. So like, we'd love to attach ourselves to you. Let's say it's Nike. Let's throw Nike out there. It wouldn't be Nike, right? Because they're too big. But Nike comes in and they're like, hey, we'd like to just have some product placement in your podcast. Like have the new shoes. Maybe you guys have one CTA where you talk about Nike and you drive to our website. Like usually an agreement, something comes, you come to an agreement around something like that where it's, product placement maybe and that could be the placement of their logo and some of your videos or whatever and then also maybe a, you come to an agreement on a certain amount of shorts or videos that you produce each week can have tta or just a call out of nike or that brand or whoever comes in and so that at the end you're making money with affiliates at your revenue memberships and then brand sponsorships so the beauty of this method is that brand sponsorships are going to come if you truly improve after a lot of time, right? Like we mentioned before, but the, and, and that's tr tr the traditional marketing method is you're building, 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 building until you get to that point. And you're just relying on like traditional methods of marketing, which is just word of mouth, posting it on social, but not optimizing on social. And so you grow really slowly. It's a crawl towards overall podcast growth. And that's why most fail. That's why most don't make it past three episodes. And so this new method, actually, when you're focusing on a short form, not only can you see quicker return in terms of customer feedback because of you're getting views on these social platforms, but also those views turn into long form retention and long form growth, which is your overall goal in the first place, making it easier to stick to a long form podcast as you're trying to grow. And then also you're able to monetize, which is obviously for a lot of people, like who, who doesn't, who would turn out monetization for one, but then also for a lot of people, you almost need that in order to keep going. So a lot of entrepreneurs or businesses who are starting podcasts specifically for organic marketing, they want to see a return there, right? They want to see some type of return and they want to be able to use their podcast to push to their product. Like that's why they're doing it. Well, this method allows you to do that. And specifically through the affiliate slash product CTA method that we, we talked about. So to sum it up, why this is so cool is what it says right here, right? How to monetize here is you monetize through multiple streams of revenue on the way up towards earning a brand deal. So no more waiting three, four years, five years, six years, whatever it may be to earn that brand, that brand deal, or that sponsorship, you can monetize on the way up and see a lot of results on the way up to where when that brand does come, look, they're going to drop a shit ton of money, of course, but now it's a lot of money on top of what you're already making. So that's really cool. You don't feel uh, the pressure anymore of building something all the time without seeing results and having to wait a few years. Now I come here to this calendar view just to make it a little bit more clear. Even we're looking at the same scale now in terms of months, so six months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months, which is two years, 30 and 36. In the first six months, you can start making money off affiliates. 
12 months, you can make money off ad share revenue and you should kind of be around a place where you have a hundred thousand followers. Then you add a uh, membership money, which is even more money. As you can see, the money's growing a little bit each time after 24 months. I mean, now you're talking stacks because you're adding that brand deal. So again, like that's going to be the lumps on the money you'll get. But up to this point, now you're talking about the combination of all this, you're, you're, you're sitting pretty. And then from there, obviously just turning up what you're doing. So the more followers you get, you're going to get new brand deals. There's going to be more money. You're, the percentage of affiliates you're going to be driving are going to be way more. The ad share revenue, you're going to be getting more because you're going to be getting more views and then you're going to be more people entering your membership. So that's just to show what you can build. All meanwhile, like once you finally get to those 36 months, if that probably longer, let's say you get a brand deal, well, it's going to take you a lot longer, right? You're doing all these different months here at six, 12, 18, 24, without really seeing any type of results or reward. So yeah, the short form optimization marketing method will not only allow you to blow up how quickly you can grow, if that makes sense, uh, to just blow up your podcast in general, but it'll also allow you to blow up your revenue streams and do it a lot more quickly. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please leave a like, uh, subscribe and leave a notification bell so you get notified when I do drop new videos. I'm going to be, you know, just continuing to drop hopefully a lot of what you think is valuable content in terms of how to blow up your podcast in the way that we've been able to do so quickly. And that's going to, that's going to be content. That's going to be monetization streams. That's going to be all these different types of things that like have benefited us. Right. So yeah, like subscribe and leave a comment. Also, if you have any questions about anything that I went over, or if you've seen any other type of success or monetization vehicles or avenues that have been successful either for you or for others that you've heard of. And then we can make another one of these going forward in the future that can incorporate those as well. But if you have any input, let me know and uh, yeah, enjoy. I'll talk to you guys next time.